Hey guys, this is Pango with a small intro to the Arnold Render for Cinema 4D. Solid Angle's Arnold Render is a global illumination ray tracer developed for and by the film industry and able to handle very aggressive render environments. It's the preferred Hollywood render at the moment and has proven itself production worthy on numerous major blockbusters. It's used by over 300 studios already and available for a number of 3D packages. The Arnold Render is photorealistic, easy to use and memory efficient. So let's have a look at some examples to underline Arnold's capabilities. Let's try and set up a simple scene. I'm going to switch to the Arnold Renderer and I'm presented with this reduced set of controls. Down here is the ray depth and that's all you need to know for now. I'm going to find my Arnold menu under plugins and tear it off. I'm creating an Arnold sky and I'm opening the interactive preview render. Dock it over here and let's check out what we can do. Disable the background in diffuse and glossy, otherwise we're going to have some kind of double exposure. I'm going to load in a texture into the background. It's an unwrapped HDR and I took it from the content library. As you can see Arnold is very responsive and I can see changes almost immediately. This kind of feedback is essential when you want to create photorealistic renders. By updating the image in front of you almost live, you are forcing your brain to react instinctively to what it sees and determine if it's real. So with a fast feedback like this, you won't experience what we could call perception fatigue. I've created an Arnold standard material and I'm going to put it on a dragon. I'm going to double click my material to get into the attributes. I got my color controls here. Again, with a very fast feedback. The specular is the reflection in Arnold. In order to see it properly, I'm turning down the weight on the diffuse, and I'm turning down the roughness on the reflection. Now we have an almost mirror-like surface. I'm going to turn on the Fresnel, and to make it more physically accurate, I'm going to go down to the refraction and make the index of ref refraction control the specular IRR. I'm going to come back to the diffuse, put some weight back in. My image is a bit overexposed and there's two way I can change that. Either by putting a parameters tag on the camera and actually changing the exposure for the whole shot, or it could go into the Arnold sky and change the exposure on the actual light. I'm going to use the camera exposure. I'm just going to turn my dragon around, and uh, as you can see, transformations are also updated live in the IPR. Now let's try making a transparent material. I'm going to turn down the color, could have just turned down the weight, down with the roughness, and the refraction weight up. Now there's a few things we need to do when we're working with transparent materials. One is to use the environment as exit color. Another thing is to put an Arnold tag on our geometry and click off the opaque. We also need to increase our ray depth in the refraction. We can make tinted glass by changing the transmittance value. You just need to remember your scene scale when working with this. Now let's try and make a subsurface scattering material. Get the transmittance back up, go into subsurface scattering and turn on the weight. You can make a specific color and you can actually change the radius on each separate color channel. Everything just melts together and acts physically correct to each other. With Arnold it's in my opinion out of the box beauty, interactivity, speed and scalability. Memory efficiency. When we're talking about this we're talking about two things. One is Arnold's hyper-threading ability. Arnold is optimized to use all your cores for rendering, which makes it a very scalable render, because if you want faster results, get a faster machine. Arnold is compatible with Team Render, which enables you to employ every machine in your studio to increase distributed render power. 
distributed rendering with team render, works for animations and also for still images. The second thing about memory is the way Arnold handles data. Arnold deals with enormous amounts of data without breaking a sweat and only loads in what it needs. It can use its own stand-ins, which you make yourself, as digital assets, and it also uses the text image format, which is a tiled and mid-map format, making working with large textures very efficient. Solid Angle is, by the way, incredibly fast at crushing bugs and making stuff easy to use. An example of this is the object matter system, which Solid Angle has made very easy to use for Cinema 4D artists, along with an automatic text generation utility. That's the image format. Okay, now let's look at some of the production features that Arnold has available. Number one, no more flicker. The Arnold render is unbiased, which means there are no light caches or similar cheating approaches. You might experience grain, but no flicker. Fur, it's absolutely beautiful and incredibly fast, even with motion blur and duff, which is also achieved almost without any loss of speed. Arnold also flawlessly works with X particles. Another aggressive ingredient to render is volumes. Arnold handles these fantastically, and it's beautiful to have everything integrated in your final render. Arnold supports OpenVDB, which is not yet available for Cinema 4D natively, but OpenVDB data can be important from, for example, Houdini. Here's a cloud I created in Houdini, exported as an OpenVDB and imported into Arnold for Cinema 4D. It renders very fast and the lightning is beautiful. I'm going to try and make some instances of it and see what happens to the render speed. Arnold supports Turbulence FD, available for Cinema 4D, making it a full VFX package. For creating physically accurate materials, Arnold is very close to the real thing. There are a number of third-party shaders available for free. Anders Langlands has created a shader package, which among others hold the AL Fresnel conductor, with some presets available and the ability to insert your own values. Jonah Friedman from Syab has made JF Nested Dielectric, which solves one of the most frequently discussed production challenges of nested dielectrics. Imagine the ice cubes in the fluid in the glass. And it's some of these things I've just mentioned that's for me some of the most interesting parts of Arnold. It's pushing some of the hard work into the render, like the Arnold stand-in. You can create your own digital assets using Arnold and reuse them to create insanely huge digital environments. Here I'm creating a forest with MoGraph and a few Arnold stand-ins. These stand-ins are cross-platform and cross-3D application, so assets can be created in Houdini and used in Cinema 4D and vice versa. We're actually talking about using Cinema 4D as an assembler with several artists creating assets for very complex scenery. Arnold handles displacement very efficiently, and some people claim that they simply stopped using bump mapping because of this. Now I'm going to show you one of the biggest game changers, at least for me the material editor. It is node-based. If you haven't worked with this before, don't be intimidated, because I guarantee you, once you try it, you'll never go back. Node-based material editors are essential if you want to create complex materials, and it is exactly the opposite of complex. It is overview. Instead of jumping in and out of menus, copy-pasting values, you get access to all levels of your shader. And you can reuse and rewire nodes. This doesn't change the way materials are built, but it will change your workflow drastically. Finally, there's Arnold's AOVs. It stands for Arbitrary Output Variables, and this is one of the most powerful features of Arnold. It is also the most advanced feature, and Solid Angle is doing a huge effort making it accessible for Cinema 4D artists. The AOV is Arnold's equivalent to Cinema 4D's Multipass, and they have everything you need to take your render into compositing for further enhancements. Material and object IDs, normals, UV coordinates, wireframe, color channels, etc. Now, Arnold might not be the right choice for everyone, but there are some huge advantages to it. Arnold being a software renderer, I'm able to work with it on my laptop and I can send my renders to an online render farm. If you're mainly doing non-photorealistic renders from cinema, Arnold is not for you. However, if you want photorealistic Hollywood renders, easy to set up materials and renders, and no flicker, Arnold is for you. And this is probably the main thing for me. It's the look. It just instantly reeks of production quality, and this is something that is in very high demand these days. It is very easily installed and licensed if you decide to get rid of the watermark. Thanks for watching guys, and have fun using Arnold Render for Cinema 4D.